This is a complex topic, but I'm going to do my best today to make it into something easier to understand. Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video we are going to be simplifying retinol. Now please know in advance that when you simplify a topic you lose the details. So this will of course not be the most um, in-depth video. But I guess my goal in this video is just to make this a little bit less mysterious of a topic. So if you are interested in more information, I will link some of the papers that I have read in the description box. I will link some other videos so that you can do more in-depth research. In order to do this video, I watched a lot of other videos on this topic as well as read the papers. Uh, and I think there's really quite a few misunderstandings around this family. So first off, the entire family is retinoids. Retinol is only one part of it, probably the most, I would say, commercially popular, but by no means an end-all be-all. So let's start off by a really basic, what do retinoids do for your skin? Well, they have two main uses. One is anti-aging and one is anti-acne. We have seen many, many studies demonstrate that retinoids are effective for both of these purposes. Where this tends to get confusing is that there's many different retinoids and it's up to you to choose the most appropriate one for you. So, in order to help you understand all of the different retinoids, I've come up with an analogy. I want you to picture a house. The house has two rooms. One is the anti-acne room and one is the anti-aging room. Now this house has a master key or a skeleton key that opens both of these doors and the name of that key is retinoic acid. Retinoic acid, also known as Retin-A, also known as Tretinoin, is this strongest retinoid. The reason that this is the strongest form is that it is the active form. It doesn't need to go through any conversions. It works exactly as it is. But there are quite a few cons with retinoic acid because it is so strong, you see the most side effects. And what this means is people will report dryness, they'll have peeling, and this is a result of it doing what it is supposed to do. One of the biggest misconceptions that I see with all of these retinoids is people calling them exfoliants. They're actually not. An exfoliant is something that works on the outer layer of the skin. You know, think of a physical scrub, you scrub away that skin, whereas these ingredients work deep in the skin. And what they do, you may have heard, they increase turnover. That basically means that they make new skin faster. So when you're making new skin really fast, it may not have had time to be properly moisturized by the skin, so you end up with the dryness, you end up with the peeling. This is also why this is only available by prescription, so please don't come in my comment section to try to tell anybody else where you can get it without one. You need to see your dermatologist or your doctor in order to get this because it is so potent. I think it is really important to remember that, you know, this may be the most effective on the market, but it may not be for everybody. You know, just to give you an example, if you do not have the downtime in your life to be able to go through a phase of peeling and dryness, then you may not want to go for this. So back to that analogy, remember how I said there are two rooms? Well, there is a key that opens the anti-acne door specifically, and that is Adapalene, also known as Differin. So Differin, as well as Tazerac, are both synthetic retinoids, and what that ends up meaning is that they do share certain activation with retinoic acid. I'm getting complicated again, aren't I? Retinoic acid, that skeleton key to the house, acts on four different receptors, whereas both the synthetic retinoids act on two of those receptors. Or again, in my analogy, they open the door to anti-acne, but not the door to anti-aging. And the studies that have looked at the results with both Differin and Tazerac do see a reduction in acne. There is some preliminary data suggesting that they may help with anti-aging. So I guess you could say we're kind of feeling around in the darkness of the anti-acne room to find out is there a hallway between this and the anti-aging room. Right now we're not sure. What we know is that this works on acne and as a big added benefit, it is nowhere near as irritating 
as Retin-A. It is still potent, you're still likely to experience some amount of dryness, but not to the level of Retin-A. So basically, if your concern is acne, it might be much smarter to opt for Differin at the moment. Plus, this was formerly available only by prescription, but now you can walk into Walgreens, Ulta, etc. and grab this. Now, I personally have tried this. It's actually Aura who uses this in this household. I'll get into later in this video what I personally prefer. And then we have a newer addition to this family known as hydroxypenacolone retinoate. You see this in products from The Ordinary to Sunday Riley's A+. This is supposed to act in the same way as Retin-A. However, the studies are kind of lacking. In order to make this kind of a more scientific statement, we need to have some studies that are conducted independently. At this particular moment, these studies have been conducted by the brands that are selling the products. I do think it's promising, but I wouldn't personally rely on this ingredient just yet. As somebody who does come from the sciences and kind of understands maybe too well how uh, things do work behind the scenes, I think it's very important to understand that bias can very easily affect a study, including, you know, which markers you look at within the study, which ones you actually report on versus just kind of gloss over. So, you know, I'm not throwing this one away. A lot of people use this. A lot of people report results. Uh, just from a scientific perspective, um, I wouldn't advise you to 100% rely on it right now. Hopefully I haven't lost you, but I have said some kind of confusing things so far. So what did I mean when I was talking about conversion, right? Okay, so like I did say, retinoic acid is the active form, which means you have a couple other forms that need to be converted. Let's get into simplifying this topic. Have you ever been into a Walmart and seen the key machine where you can press your own key, so now you have a copy to the house that you are renting from your roommate as well? So, you know, you go to the rack, you pick out the key that you want. I always pick a pink one because I'm me. You have that key in your hand, it is not yet made into your house key. That, my friends, is retinol. Also known as retinaldehyde, there is one conversion required in order to get this to its active form. This is a surprisingly difficult ingredient to find on the market, and I've never really quite been sure why. I think it's possibly because there is more risk of irritation, Personally, I have tried it in the MyShell Remarkable Retinol Serum. There are some things to keep in mind whenever you're talking about conversion. You are going to lose some of the percentage. This is actually why I don't plan to continue using this particular product. Even though I do like it, I feel like I did see results from it. I actually think I've seen more results from other products that I'm gonna talk about later. So, the problem that I have with this is that I just have no idea how much retinaldehyde is actually in this. While we're here, let's talk about a related molecule. This is retinol retinoate. It too requires only one conversion, but it's a little different from retinaldehyde. It's actually a retinol molecule, which we're about to talk about, combined with retinoic acid, that active molecule. The idea behind retinol retinoate is that it breaks apart and you have the active version ready to go on your skin as well as retinol, which will be converted later. So you kind of have this time release retinol situation going on. I have actually tried this in the form of Verso's serum. It is very pricey, but yes, I did actually have really good results with it, and it is available without a prescription. But now that I've already gone ahead and mentioned retinol, let's go ahead and talk about that one because I do think it is the most popular. And back to my analogy, retinol is like sheets of metal. You need to take those sheets of metal and make them into the keys that are carried in Walmart where you grab your key and you press it. You now have two conversions in order to get to that skeleton key, the master key, 
of retinoic acid. The reason I suspect retinol is so popular is that it's not anywhere near as irritating as retinoic acid, and yet we do see results repeatedly, both in terms of anti-acne and in terms of anti-aging. The problem with retinol is that the amount of retinols on the market is a little bit on the exhausting side. I'm gonna keep things simple and start with the drunk elephant A. Passione. This is a 1% retinol, which means that you are most likely ending up with 0.01% Retin-A after all of the conversion is said and done. I personally feel like I had the best results using this. I will link my video if you are interested. It is potent, it is strong. A lot of people have seen side effects with it, but as somebody who's used retinol for two years at this point before I went into that trial, it actually worked really well for me. And as long as you are going with a pure retinol, then you can best guess the end amount of retinoic acid you're going to have. The retinol product that I used for absolutely years is the Peter Thomas Roth Retinol Fusion PM. This is a 1.5% encapsulated retinol. So now we've got yet another thing to define. Encapsulated retinol does not mean pure retinol. Instead, it means that the retinol molecule is in fact encapsulated. In general, I'd argue this is a very good thing because you actually need to make sure that retinol is getting deep into your skin. The problem with that is that by saying 1.5% encapsulated retinol, that actually includes both the retinol and whatever's used to encapsulate it. So I can't really tell you the end percentage of this. I can't even guess at it, to be honest with you, but I can tell you that I've seen great results using this. It's been one of my favorites for a long time. Because this is such a liquidy product, it seems to absorb into the skin extremely well. And you know, it is a complete serum. It doesn't just contain retinol, it also contains antioxidants. So it kind of gives you everything you need all in one. Another retinol product that I've been trying is one that was sent to me by Dr. Brandt. This is the 2% Retinol Complex Serum. Same situation with this, although a higher percentage, it is encapsulated as well. We do have one more variation to talk about as far as this analogy is concerned, and that is retinol esters. I'm gonna call these guys metal ore. There is a lot to convert here. In general, we say there are three conversions necessary, but from what I've read as far as the research, I'm not really that convinced of the effectiveness of retinol esters. And by the way, this would include ingredients like retinol palmitate. I personally get really hesitant when I see products claim that they have retinol in their products. Then you look in the ingredients and you only see retinol palmitate. I personally find it to be a little on the misleading side. You know, again, remember the cosmetics industry isn't that well regulated and it really becomes a burden on the customer to have to look at these ingredients and make sure these companies are actually being straightforward with you as far as what their products contain. We are not done yet because we need to talk about one new retinol alternative. It is none other than Bacuchiol, Bacuchiol, as this product wants to tell me. Maybe we're both wrong, the Inky list. I need to make sure that I say in this video that there are more drawbacks with everything I've talked about up until this point. One is that you cannot use anything that I just talked about if you are pregnant. Another is that they are all sun sensitive. Basically, if your retinol is seeing the sunlight, it gets destroyed. So if for whatever reason you're applying your retinol and going out in the sun, uh, it's getting ruined. Bacahil is not sensitive to sunlight, nor will it make you sensitive to sunlight. It is something that is generally safe to use if pregnant, although please always check with your doctor. And yet there are studies showing that Bacahil seems to do the same thing as retinoids. One study in particular that I've referenced several times on this channel found that using 1% Bacahil combined with 2% BHA had similar results to using an anti-acne treatment. So it's a very promising, all-natural ingredient without the side effects that you traditionally have with the retinoids. Side note on this, I am holding up the Inky List Bacahil, but I personally, I hate to say it, I really did have better results with herbivores. I'll link my video. I really like their Bacahil. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below letting me know what you would like to see simplified next. Thank you guys so much for watching.